what's going on guys? I got a uh, 24 inch DRO that I'm going to put on uh, the lathe. It's a GO752 Grizzly. Uh, it's basically a 10 by 22 inch um, metal lathe. It is rainy. <laughs> Can't tell. And I have this crack because it's hot up in here. It's uh, July 3rd, so it's July 3rd, so I wish everybody a happy 4th of July. But what I'm going to do is try to attempt to install this. I didn't really see any good good videos out there um, on how to do this, so I figured I'll be the first to start off, and then people can improve from there. <laughs> so this is everything that came with this little kit and I'm looking up the price now it was a pretty good deal a few little brackets another little bracket for that obviously the 24 inch we have this that is uh, this has a magnetic base and it also has this little slide on base So you can kind of set that up there if you want, or I guess that's aluminum. <laughs> uh, it's going to get flat up on top of this. So what I'm going to do is use, where I'm going to put this, I'm going to stick it right on top of that. I do plan on getting one for the cross slide up here. This is what we're dealing with right now. Obviously I'm right where that dot is see how well this shows up. Um, I had a return request just because it didn't have um, instructions in there and I'm not quite sure exactly how to install it on this leg. That might be one of those universal things that you just have to make it work. So I'm not actually returning it. I just sent a request to have we call it instructions if there are any uh, so anyways yeah 24 inch digital readout DRO large LCD readout scale for Bridgeport mill lathe is I think is the title of it it says Bridgeport mill and lathe um, as you can see $47.49 so pretty good deal okay so where to mount this this has a splash shield on there and there's just three bolts that hold it on there so I, I got that out and here's where I'm going to install this on the back side. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to mount this down here-ish. And then this bracket, I'm just going to have, instead I'm going to take this bend out of it. So it'll be basically like this. And I'm going to try to just use this bolt here and tie it into that right there. So here's the back of this. And these little screws right here came with it. I forgot to mention. They're just little bitty, little bitty screws. And that's where this goes in. It's right there. Um, but what would what would have been best is if it was able to screw in like this. Okay, so it would have been like that. And then I could have had... Then I could have just drilled it, tapped it, onto that. That would have been perfect. But no. See, none of these other bolt holes match up. Another thing when mounting this, I want this tucked up underneath the ways, the bed. That way if anything, 
I cut off or whatever falls down, it's not going to to hit this. Now if I had it mounted the way it looked like they had it, like out here, that would work. But I have this way out here. So anyways, that's just my logic. Maybe completely wrong, but that's what I'm going for. So alright. I'm gonna straighten this piece and I'll get back with you. Okay, so here's where we're at. I got this bent up, put in there, and not really able to put that in there very well. So I got to thinking, I was like, well crap, once this is on there, I still need to tighten that. And I can't do it with that. I gotta go on the outside. So I found this, uh, it's an eight millimeter bolt, and it turns out to be an M6 by one. M6 by one. I can already tell you I'm gonna be fighting with this, so I might actually climb up on the workbench and try and get that to get in there. So. All right, give me a minute. All right, so got that mounted in there. I measured the distance from here to the back of this, and from here to the back of this, uh, and then I divided that by two for the difference of that, added that, added that number from the back of this to the front of this, and that told me how much of a shim I needed, and I found this, I found this bar stock, I don't know what it came off of, but it's pretty nice, <laughs> that's about as close as I could get. 124. So I needed to get uh, 0.1116, and so after I after I grinded off the paint on both sides, can't get any closer than that. So now what I need to do. Is I'll mount this behind this and then uh, I'm not sure if I want to drill and tap that or if I just want to use oops, or if I just want to use some uh, sheet metal screws I think I might drill and tap it if I have the right bolts available. All I need is two. Um, and it doesn't need a whole lot of holding. All it's doing is keeping it still from moving. So there's, there's not a lot of pressure on there. So. Alright, well I'll get back to to that and I'll let you know what I wind up doing. So, hold on. Okay, so I'm going to show you on this easy side. That's so how we have this on there. The to do this one, we're going to have to move this motor, which that sucks. Because there's no way I can get in there straight. Um, there's no way I can get in there straight. So I got to. Remove this motor, 
and there's I think there's four bolts there's two up here and I'm sure there's two probably on the bottom and then I don't know probably something inside that I'll have to I'm sure the belt I'll have to take off or something like that but hopefully that's it's that easy and then I will drill and tap that and get back with you okay so this is how it'll look that's as far over as it'll go so we'll do a test I got it all hooked up it came with the uh, the batteries they are the CR2032 batteries uh, so I got that zeroed out I have a couple ghetto tests I have the dial indicator set up and I have this that I'm just going to hold on there and I'm going to move it and see if we can get somewhat of the uh, a same reading on all of these. We're at zero on everything so let's give it a shot. Got 90 on that, 89, let's say I'm 48, let's say I'm 50, that one's saying 50. I moved that back to zero, and that met back at zero. So let's do. I guess let's do 100. I guess we'll just do 110. That's 99 and 3.30 seconds. Which that's weird. And we're pretty much on the zero. So let's go all the way back to zero. Back at zero, and back at zero, do another 50, got 50 on that, 50 on that, 48 on that, so it's off by two thousands. That's probably good enough for most of the work that I do. I'm gonna look on there. I'm gonna look on there and see what the the tolerance is supposed to be. But um, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. Oh, so that's off by by two thousand. So um, that's probably close enough to the stuff that I work with. Now, if uh, whenever I start making airplane parts and stuff like that, I just won't use this or jet engines or you know when I start working for NASA. Um, I just won't use this, but I think I think that'll get me close enough to most everything that uh, that I do. Uh, I'll just keep in mind that whenever I do need something that's close tolerance, uh, that I will make sure to use a dial indicator or something else. So, all right. Well, that's kind of my review of this. That's how I installed it. And there's really not not a lot of travel where that uh, that cord goes so uh, like I said I'll pull the slack out of it and tie it up behind so I don't have to worry about anything uh, this does have an automatic timer so that's that's good to a degree I guess <laughs> and it does have the little base if you want to put it on the base so Alright guys, there you go, a 24 inch uh, DRO for under 50 bucks. It's off by two thousandths, but it is what it is. So, <laughs> Alright, y'all comment, right? We'll get back with you. Thanks for watching. See ya.